Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about Hawaii, the big island, so to speak, Kiaulea, the volcano there, one of the most active volcanoes in the world. And this guy, it's quite dangerous because it seems this guy is waking up and preparing for another eruption. We have seen a short fissure eruption in June, but now it keeps rumbling again and rumbling again with earthquake swarms, with higher magnitude earthquakes. So we should look into this because there's quite a few people that would be affected by this. So total over 60,000 people could be affected by this volcano. So Let's look into this first. I have to take care of those guys, but then I'll see you right now inside. Kiaulea is one of the most active, but also most fascinating volcanoes in the world. It's, as I just said, situated on the big island. It's a shield volcano and it's known for its frequent eruptions and its mesmerizing lava flows. But how dangerous is this volcano really, guys? And what does it mean for the people living nearby that it's becoming so active again? Did it wake up? Let's find out in this video. Kiolea has a long history of eruptions and some of the most notable include the 1955 eruption in the Lower East Rift Zone and I hope I'm pronouncing this right and the Puo'o eruption that did last from 1983 until 2018. So that's a long time. So the 2018 eruption was particularly dramatic because with the lava flows that were sent down, they did destroy hundreds of homes in the Leilani estates and they did cause the evacuation of thousands of residents. And that's why it seems to be rumbling in an area again that could cause a lot of damage to homes and infrastructure. So what does it mean geologically when we say Kilauea is a shield volcano? It means that it primarily produces effusive eruptions. So this type of eruption is characterized by outpouring of lava rather than explosive activity. So it opens fissures, the lava comes out and it's flowing. It's not like spitting particles kilometers high into the atmosphere. But we have to consider it's not just a lava flow that does pose a threat. Of course, it's like ashfall, volcanic gases, so volcanic smog, and of course, the earthquakes that it produces before it erupts. And in this area also, it produces landslides that are coming with this volcanic activity and that are threatening the inhabitants of Big Island and around this volcano. So how dangerous is Kiolea today? The good news is that this volcano is one of the most closely monitored volcanoes in the world, like the supervolcano Campi Flegri in Italy. If you're interested in that, there's a lot going on there. It's very scary. And I think some of the danger is put underneath the rug. So check out my videos about that. I'll put them in the end screen as well. So one of the most closely monitored volcanoes, the United States Geological Survey, it's called USGS, and of course the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, shortcut HVO, keep a constant watch on this volcano's activity. And recent activity has been increasing somewhat, and also with periodic lava lake activity at the Halema Uma'u crater. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, so don't be mad at me. I'm just trying to pronounce it as it's written so everyone knows what I mean. So let's talk about the people that are living in this danger zone because that's critical. So the Puna district, for example, is home to 45,000 residents. So way more residents than we're dealing with in Iceland. If you watch my channel, I'm reporting about Iceland a lot. So the little town of Vindavik, 4,000 people had to be evacuated. So one of the districts, Puna district on Hawaii, Big Island, 
home to about 40,000 residents. And then the, there is the Ka'u district with around 9,000 residents. And that are the most vulnerable areas that are in direct proximity. And also we have to say that these communities were heavily impacted during the 2018 eruption. Good morning. Uh, the update for Kilauea Volcano today is that activity continues at both the summit and in the Lower East Rift Zone. The Lower East Rift Zone lava flows are issuing from six fissures. The fissures have generally moved from the east back to the west. They're now in the western edge of the Leilani Estate subdivision. And the lava flows are moving very vigorously to the south to produce an ocean entry. Uh, the ocean entry is making its way towards the west and there is still a Lays plume at the ocean entry that will exist as long as there is an ocean entry. The Lays plume is, is something that was there even when Pool O'o was producing lava flows and tube systems of lava that went into the ocean. Moving towards the summit, the activity is producing um, explosions that happen about two times a day that produce ash up to between 8,000 and 10,000 feet above sea level. And there are several minor explosions that occur inter intermixed with those larger explosions during the day. Uh, those, uh, the larger explosions are gonna produce ash ball that goes downwind, so people in communities downwind of the summit will still be seeing ash ball. And there's also still continued deflation and high seismicity in the summit area. In addition to that, we have Hilo, that's the largest city on the big island that has about 45,000 residents as well. They could be affected by the volcanic gases depending on where the wind goes and ashfall. So their life is not in danger, I would say, but it's definitely not good. These volcanic gases can be very toxic if you breathe them in. One thing that is very good that we have to say before we go deeper into this topic what's happening what just happened in the last few days hawaii has a robust emergency management system in place like that goes from early warning system to evacuation plans and they're saying that the residents are well prepared to respond in case of an eruption so i know many of you probably will say Hmm, robust emergency management system, early warning systems. When there was the Lahania fire, how did this go? It didn't go well. So it seems they're very good prepared when it comes to eruptions, volcanic eruptions. So let's give them credit for that. They're also doing public education campaigns so that they can ensure that the people who live there know the risks and know how to stay safe. And that is lacking in Italy a little bit right now. I'm reporting about this a lot because they're only talking about the earthquake activity and the scientists are urging officials, well, you need to speak about the potential of a volcanic eruption and a large volcanic eruption where about 3 million people could be threatened. So you have to let people know. I'll talk about this in my next video again because there's new information. How quickly should everyone try to get out? Their road system and the area would be clogged and you'll be shocked. They're giving the number of cars necessary. So the number of people that would need to start evacuation simultaneously in order to clog everything already. And that number, we're talking about over 3 million people that will be in panic if this volcano erupts. And you will be surprised about the number of cars that will already cause devastation so stay tuned for that it's probably coming in a few days maybe today later today stay tuned that's why you have to subscribe and of course leave this video a like guys if everyone who watches it leaves it a like that would help my channel tremendously so Kiolea is a powerful force of nature and of course, this continues monitoring and preparedness helps the efforts to mitigate the risks. You cannot eliminate them. So they say it's roughly 54,000 people that are living in the primary danger zones. And it's important that they stay informed. And it's, that's the key to living 
safely in the shadow of this magnificent volcano. So there were so many earthquakes since last Friday over the weekend and into today. And it was ranging from 20 earthquakes per hour and up to 30 earthquakes per hour. And you know, guys, if you're watching my channel, usually that's called like an earthquake swarm. And if there's an earthquake swarm, it's usually an indication that magma is on the move. So what's happening at Kiolea? We haven't seen an eruption yet because usually these earthquake swarms they don't last for days that long. It's kind of unusual. So are we dealing with a magma intrusion or is magma still rising up? A magma intrusion is if magma's on the way, it's trying to grind its way up to the surface or somewhere else, but it doesn't make it to the surface. But definitely magma is leaving the magma chamber where it has accumulated, that's called an intrusion. And if magma actually comes to the surface and emerges as lava, that's called an eruption. So what is going on? Despite like 30 earthquakes an hour, it is not erupting. And the seismic activity of this volcano continues. Besides, um, it's located inside Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park. That's what the area is called. And over the weekend, if we count the number of earthquakes total, it's been over 500 earthquakes. That is significant. That is something that cannot be ignored. And the geologists are saying, well, the volcano's not erupting. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess we can see that, right? They're saying, yes, you know, this increased seismic activity is definitely a sign of an impending volcanic eruption. But for us geologists, they say it's still hard to predict when one will occur. And that's why volcanoes are so dangerous, because you never know how much time you have, how much warning time you have between the earthquakes and then the actual eruption. And in many cases, it can be very, very short and too short where there's dangerous volcanoes, explosive volcanoes, to evacuate everyone safely. Hint, Campi Flegri. So what are the geologists saying of the U.S. Geological Survey? Um, they are saying that Kilauea's Upper East Rift Zone began experiencing a seismic swarm on the afternoon of June 27th. So the Upper East Rift Zone, you can see it here in the map. That's where it's located within this national park. Um, it was hundreds of earthquakes on June 27th. And then late Saturday night, the seismic activity increased to about 30 seismic events per hour. And then between Saturday and Sunday, there were more than 500 earthquakes detected beneath the Upper East Rift Zone and the surrounding area. So if they're all in the same spot, it tells you magma's doing something there. So they're saying after it has escalated so much, it was decreasing slightly on Sunday morning to about like 20 earthquakes per hour, but it still keeps going. Since it hasn't erupted yet, we're all wondering, well, will it? And the scientists are saying it's impossible to say if this specific increase in activity will lead to an eruption in the near future, or maybe it will continue with these earthquakes for quite a while. So they basically know that they don't know, and that's what they're saying. And that's okay, because the science is not progressed that far. What happened in the previous eruptions that were coming from beneath the Upper East Rift Zone. They happened near the Pauahi Crater and the Hiyaka Crater. And the most recent eruption that happened there happened for one day or over the course of one day in November 1979 near the Pauahi Crater. So are we entering a new eruptive episode with this volcano? Is this the beginning? Maybe there is an intrusion happening like we had in Iceland November 10th, big magma intrusion with a big earthquake swarm. And then almost every four weeks an eruption was happening and it's still happening. 
So is this something similar that is happening there? The June eruption, the fissure that opened there, looked very similar to what we're seeing in Iceland or have been seeing for the last eight months in Iceland. They're saying there are no signs of an imminent eruptions at the moment. So the last eruption that happened on June 3rd, that was on the Southwest Summit. And then this eruption stopped several days later. So is it preparing for a new one? Like compared to Iceland, the ones that are watching my channel, you know what I mean. We have to say this area here in Hawaii hasn't seen an eruption for 50 years. Right now, there is no indication that magma is moving to the June 3rd eruption site again. So it looks like if it erupts, that it will erupt somewhere else. But the geologists are saying, because they know that they don't know, that changes can happen very quickly that could lead up to a potential eruption. Yeah, especially since Kilauea is one of the world's most active volcanoes. And here's a good map where you can see the recent earthquakes. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the earthquakes. And basically everything that you see in red, that's in the last two hours. Everything that's orange, that's within the last two days. And everything that's yellow, that's within the last two weeks. So the orange ones, that's this earthquake swarm that we just been talking about. And there you can see it's in this eastern area. And uh, some of them were above three so there were quite a few above three. An interesting story before we continue with what's going on is um, the locals are saying that Kiolea is the home of Pele. That's the Hawaiian volcano goddess. And there's a lot of like folk Hawaiian chants and oral traditions that tell of many eruptions that have been fomented by an angry Pele before the first European, the missionary Reverend William Ellis, uh, saw this summit in 1823. So the caldera there was the site of nearly continuous activity during the 19th century and the early part of the 20th century. And that's why Kiolea ranks among the world's most active volcanoes and maybe even on top of that list because you know if she is angry better beware and maybe she's getting angrier by the day right now so what we can say following the eruption on june 3rd this year that the magma has definitely been refilling repressurizing the storage system beneath the Hale Mawamau and the South Caldera region. And that has activated the earthquakes in the Upper East Rift Zone and in the caldera that is south of Hale Mawamau. So if you're interested in that, guys, subscribe because I will keep you updated, of course. So guys, I hope you liked this video on my update about Hawaii. If you did, please leave this video a like and help all of us here to gain more traction on YouTube. So that's my doggy horse. He's like a dog. He follows me everywhere. So what did I want to say? So that my videos get more traction with the YouTube algorithm. Oopsie, don't <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to support my channel, I'll use this channel to support these guys. Check out my buymeacoffee.com website. It, the link is in the description of this video. You guys are so awesome sending us coffee so that I can be awake to do these videos. So thanks for your ongoing support. It means a lot to us. And this guy's falling asleep on my shoulder. And uh, thanks for your supers. And overall for watching my videos without you guys, I couldn't do this. He agrees. So thanks for that. And I hope to see you very, very soon. And uh, I think I'll take care of this guy now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.